Welcome everyone. This is the Durango City Council regular meeting of April 5th, 2022. It is 534. And uh, may we have a roll call, please? Councillor Basmans. Councillor Buell. Here. Councillor Yusuf. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Noseworthy. Present. And Mayor Baxter. Present. Uh, do we have a translator for introduction tonight? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, Mayor, this is uh, Maria Elisa Fuller. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Elisa Fuller, and I am part of the CLC, a very committed group of individuals whose mission is to generate a pragmatic attitude towards diversity. We focus our efforts in creating a safe place for all individuals while we rally for language justice. We're committed to creating spaces that allow each individual the right to communicate in what we call their hard language. By doing so, we're confident to envision those outcomes can benefit all the participants. We are going to use simultaneous interpretation to create this space today. So when I finish saying this in Spanish, we will turn on interpretation and you will see a globe. Please select the language that you feel more comfortable with. For those folks who are in the Spanish channel, I suggest you mute the original audio so you don't listen to the speaker and the interpreter at the same time. I do suggest you to please uh, try to keep a comfortable rhythm to allow better interpretation. Buenas tardes con todos, eh, señora alcaldesa, mi nombre es María Elisa Fuller, soy parte de el CLC, un grupo muy comprometido de individuos cuya misión es generar centramos esfuerzos en crear espacios seguros para todas las personas mientras nos movilizamos a favor de la justicia. Estamos comprometidos a crear espacios que permitan a cada individuo el derecho de expresarse en lo que llamamos su lenguaje de corazón. Al hacerlo, visualizamos conversaciones reales cuyos beneficios puedan ser de Eh, cuyos beneficios pueden ser para todos los participantes. Utilizaremos la interpretación simultánea para crear este espacio el día de hoy. Con español se podrá activar la interpretación. Usted verá un ícono de, ícono de globo terráqueo en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Puede escoger el idioma con el que usted se sienta más cómodo. Para las personas que están en el canal de español, sugiero que ponga en silencio el audio original para que no escuche al orador y al intérprete al mismo tiempo. This is all I have to say. Have a great meeting. I'm ready when you are. Thank you, Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Diego, were you also going to introduce yourself? No. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Then we'll move on to public participation. Um, this section of the agenda is set aside for the public to provide comments or ask questions regarding items that are not scheduled for a hearing or public testimony or that do not otherwise appear on this agenda. City Council will not respond to questions from the dais. Citizens should address their comments directly to the City Council. Each speaker will have three minutes of comments or to our, um, uh, let's see, and it is, I'm getting different paperwork here, I'm sorry. As this is a virtual meeting as well as in person, the advocacy for public participation has been adjusted. All written comments received by the city clerk by noon today and actually up until just about 20 minutes ago have been delivered to council and will be summarized in a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, Taylin Yazzie. Please uh, state your name and if you're a city resident. Hi, my name is Taylor Yazzie and I'm co-student body president at Durango High School. Even though we had a week off for spring break, there was a lot going on at DHS. And we wrapped our winter sports season, now we're beginning our spring sports season and our ladies soccer team is currently ranked fifth in the state. Our choir program fulfilled a two year dream by signing in New York City as part of the Carnegie Hall's music in school program. DH Durango High School Student Council along with the Distributive Education Club and the Business Education Connection has hosted a series of locationally focused speakers during our Wednesday enrichment time that we are calling TED DHS. We have heard about how to develop a small business with the founder of Stonehenge Engineering and the owner of Cream Bean Berry. We also had the City of Durango staff come in and educate our students about the downtown Durango redesign options. On the Friday before spring break, DHS was rocking with talent. We put on our annual DHS Rocks All Day Talent Show, which raised over $7,200 for DHS Cares, which is a fund that we use to help members of the DHS family who need short-term financial help. Our Black Student, Student Alliance held a soul food dinner and program which helped raise money for the BSA to plan an American history, culture, and college tour to Atlanta, Georgia next April. Students traveled to 
travel during spring break in two groups used to travel to learn about things they didn't see in Durango. We had a group travel to Costa Rica to observe and learn about the endemic turtle population and our DHS scuba club traveled to Roatan, Honduras where they learned about and worked on the Mesoamerican Reef, which is the second largest coral reef in the world. So that's our update. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for keeping us updated. We really appreciate it. Do we have any public comment virtually? We do not, Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll move on to proclamations and presentations. Our first proclamation is for Arbor Day week. And do we have anyone here receiving it? Yes, okay, then I'll go and read it and then you can come stand by me. <laughs> I'm uh, Matt B. City Arborist. Oh, I'm Matt B. City Arborist. Wonderful, thank you. Arbor Week, April 11th through April 15th, 2022. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas Durango, Colorado, is a city located in a natural setting of great beauty. And whereas Durango, Colorado has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its enhancement of its urban forest. And whereas the Parks and Recreation Department of the City of Durango will assist citizens, businesses, and organizations in making Durango a more beautiful place to live. Now therefore, I, Kim Baxter, Mayor of the City of Durango, do hereby proclaim the week of April 11th through April 15th, 2022, to be Arbor Week and urge citizens to celebrate by planting trees and experience the importance of trees by spending time outside enjoying the community forest. Do you have anything you want to say? Uh, no, thank you very much. Okay, That's... then I, you'll get that to them. Okay. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much. Or to Faye, actually. I think on the other proclamation that Derek Walker has brought people that will accept. Oh, excellent. But I don't have that proclamation. Uh, That's what I was asking about earlier. <laughs> I'll go I'll print your copy real quick. Thank you. Huh? That's okay. I, I can read it though while yeah, you're doing that. Yeah, if you want that. to read it, yeah, that yeah. would be great. But yeah. then, do you want me to have the physical one to give to them? Um, I I will do that after the fact. Okay. So if you will just read it today, that would be great. I'll get them the final one after the fact. Thank you. Yes. So you have people who want to see this. You want to come on up? Hello. Could you introduce yourself, please? My name is Ben Lloyd. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, proclamation for Nat National Public Safety Telecommuters Week. Whereas emergencies com telecommunicators week. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that requires police, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of law enforcement, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our law enforcement, firefighters, and paramedics is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Durango La Plata Emergency Communications Center, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our law enforcement, firefighters, and paramedics by monitoring their activities via radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators provide life-saving emergency medical dispatching services, stabilizing patients, and providing pre-arrival instructions. 
whereas public safety telecommunicators of the Durango La Plata Emergency Communications Center has contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, sorry, criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of medical patients, and whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. Now therefore I, Kim Baxter, Mayor of the City of Durango, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the second week of April each year as National Public Safety Telecommuters Week in honor of the 911 or 911 emergency dispatchers serving as first responders whose training, diligence, talent, and professionalism keep our communities safe and our citizens safe. Thank you very much. Thank You'll get a hard copy of this, okay. an official copy. All right. Is there something you'd like to say? There is. Great. My name is Ben Lloyd. I am the administrative analyst for the Durango La Plata Communications Center. On behalf of, I'm honored to accept the proclamation on behalf of the 911 dispatchers that serve not only in the city of Durango, but the, the county of La Plata. Thank you. Thank you Thank for your you. service. You. Now we're on to the city operational updates. Is there a city update for us? Yes, there is, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, just a couple things to pass out for the public. Uh, first one is our FOS launch, uh, which this effort will provide a better customer service experience for our business licenses and sales tax vendors by streamlining the paper process and the ease of use for business. So businesses no longer have to come in for business licenses. So for sales tax filing, the solution, the solution is a nimble business processing center with forms and audio calculations that let a business submit everything but their utilities directly to their local government. They will also have a soft cost savings for the city. Uh, dispatch, uh, as we were talking about 911 telecommunic 911 communications, has the addition of the of new technology that's now directly able to locate a cell phone call with rapid SOS for faster response and better safety in the event the person is unable to communicate. The city will also host the 42nd annual Arbor Day celebration at 10 a.m. on April 15th. The public is invited to the soccer fields at Santa Rita Park to help plant trees. The Durango City Council meetings and study sessions will now be live streamed on YouTube. Simply go to Durango's YouTube channel on the day and time of the meetings and they will appear at the top of the homepage. Durango has also been selected to host the 20, 2022 BMX State Championships on August 20th and 21st. Durango BMX was the number one track in Colorado for 2021, so it was picked to host the 2022 championship. There are 14 tracks in Colorado, and because Durango had the largest number of racers in 2021, it was also picked to host. And finally, the Colorado Department of Transportation, along with Morton Electric, began work yesterday after a winter shutdown of the US 550 Camino del Rio Improvement Project. Trench work will also require a lane closure at the 12th Street intersection and crosswalk near Durango Joe's Coffee Shop. And then Faye also has an update for the council in regards to- uh, As requested by council, we are starting the advertising process for boards of commissions vacancies. Uh, the advertisements, social media posts, news releases, and flyers that we will create along with the media department um, will all go out on Saturday, April 9th. Applications can be submitted at any time and we will close the application process on April 23rd to allow for the interviews by council on April 29th and May 2nd. Could I, could I say something to that, Faye? Um, I was asked yesterday by one of our board members, and he's like, now do I have to reapply? Uh, my term ends, and so there's still some confusion, among, like we had last year, among, at least in this case, one board member mm -hmm. who didn't realize he had to submit. And, and those emails have not gone out yet. They will go out later this week to all expiring term members, as well as a note that will go out to all staff liaisons for each board, reminding them to review their roster and to reach out to their individual board members on their particular board and ask them if they're interested in reapplying. Wonderful, thank you. That concludes our city update. Great, thank you very much. Now we're on to the review of the consent agenda. The consent agenda is intended to allow the City Council by a single motion to approve matters that are considered routine or non-controversial. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member requests an item be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. 
Items removed from the consent agenda will be considered under agenda item eight. May we have a reading of the consent agenda, please, Faye? The first two items are approval of minutes. 7.1 is approval of minutes of the March 15th, 2022 City Council study session. 7.2 is approval of minutes from the March 15th, 2022 City Council regular meeting. 7.3 is discussion and possible action regarding a resolution approving and adopting a City of Durango policy for in-person and virtual participation in public meetings. That will be under resolution 2022-17. 7.4 is discussion and possible action concerning 2022 municipal court judge goals. 7.5 is a request for a public hearing to consider an ordinance amending Article 3 of Chapter 18, Section 34J of the City Code of Ordinances of the City of Durango for the purposes of allowing Class 1 electric assisted mountain bikes at Twin Buttes open space area. That hearing is, would be scheduled for April 19th. 7.6 is a request for a public hearing to consider an ordinance authorizing a lease with Agile Space Industries Incorporated at the airport. Again, that hearing would be held on April 19th, 2022. 7.7 .7 is a request for a public hearing to consider the Hartman Bransom boundary adjustment uh, that would also be held on April 19th, 2022. 7.8 and 7.9 are final approval of ordinances. 7.8 is final approval of ordinance 2022-11, granting La Plata Electric Association Incorporated an easement located on city-owned property to accommodate power line improvements and add a new underground power line to serve the new Animus High School and declaring an effective date. 7.9 is final approval of ordinance 2022-12, amending portions of sections 25 through 30 of chapter 25 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Durango for purposes of amending the rates for water service. Thank you very much. Are there any um, consent agenda items that a councilor would like to remove? No? Nope. All right, then um, I'll entertain a motion for approving the consent agenda items. I move to approve the consent agenda items as listed. I'll second. Any further discussion? May we have a vote, please? Councillor Yusuf? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Noseworthy? Yes. Councillor Buell? Yes. And Mayor Baxter? Yes. So now we're on to public hearings, and we don't have any legislative and policy related hearings, and the quasi judicial hearing was withdrawn, the public hearing to consider the Animus View Townhomes conceptual. Is there anything else we have to do with that? No, Mayor. There's nothing else you do since it's been withdrawn, not continued. It's done. They'll still have. They'll have to go through the process again. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, introduction of ordinances. So 11.1 .1 is an ordinance granting an easement to KB Durango LLC for the installation of an emergency access and associated pedestrian and landscaping improvements to service a new residential development in Three Springs and declaring an effective date. So I'm going to do my best Dirk uh, impersonation. While not an attorney, I did go to a couple law school classes when I was in college and do the best I can. Uh, Mayor, this was the ordinance that the council for the city attorneys prepare in regards to the first public on this item. And if there's any questions, we do have staff uh, with all our managing director of community development to answer. Do we have any questions? Do we have a motion? What's the ordinance number? Um, I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number um, 0 2022 13. Second. Any more discussion? May we have a vote, please? Mayor Pro, Mayor Pro Tem Noseworthy? Yes. Councilor Bosman? Councilor Buell? Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 On to 11.2, an ordinance approving the annexation and initial zoning for the 1275 Escalante Drive edition, Escalante 2nd, to the City of Durango and declaring an effective date. 
Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, similar to the item above, this was another item in which we had a public hearing at our last Council meeting. Uh, council directed the City Attorney to prepare the appropriate ordinance, and the ordinance is here for your approval. Uh, Kevin Hall, our Managing Director of Community Development, is also available if there's any questions. And the ordinance number is? For 2022-14. Perfect. Um, is there any discussion or questions on this? No? May we have a motion, please? I'll move to approve ordinance number 0 2022 14. I'll second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? May we have a vote, please? Councillor Youssef? Uh, yes. Councillor Buell? Yes. Councillor Bos Bosmans? Mayor Pro Tem Noseworthy? Yes. Yes. Um, council reports and actions. Do we have any council reports and actions? Um, I can start. I had a airport commission meeting on March 17th, sorry. Um, some <clears throat> highlights and updates. Let's see here. Um, still through at least April 18th, all masks or all passengers and anyone visiting the airports are required to wear a mask. Um, February 2022 passenger traffic finished at 99% of 2019 levels. So a little bit of a dip, but not much. But final 2021 passenger traffic was up 1.7% from 2019 levels. So that was a good final number um, that we got. Um, Let's see, the terminal development, they hosted an open house, a public open house on March 16th to allow for public review um, of the design process. And it was a great chance to meet the architects and the design team and um, have the public kind of some input and stuff and it went really well. Um, still the full runway closure is um, going to be closed September 7th through September 16th of this year. Um, so no takeoffs and landings happening at um, DRO for that. And then um, that was kind of the big gist in what we did there. And then I had the Creative Economy Commission um, on March 22nd. Um, we chose a piece that will um, be nominated um, during the um, there's an award ceremony that's happening. Hang on, I'm not going to remember the name because I didn't pull it up. Um, for design and, yeah, hang on. That's not, um, where is it? Sorry. Okay, hang on, I'm going to come back to that. Um, one of the biggest things um, that is important is that the one bidder that bid on the um, pieces to go in at Maine um, withdrew their bid. And so we are now looking for another location because we just think that it is too much with the for contractors to want to do it for... It's a small project, but it's going to require so much with CDAW and you know, like traffic and stuff. So we're looking, there's a bunch of different op uh, um, options that our staff is looking at in terms of like on the river trail, but maybe something also visible from the road or maybe multiple locations because it's lots of panels. And so um, I'll have an update on that after the next one because we're working hard on that. Um, let's see here. Um, we got another um, update from the Performing Arts and Conference and Events facility that they're wanting to bring to Durango. Um, they have narrowed it down to two sites that they potentially think will work. They really want the city to support it. Um, they're working with some numbers and um, a potential proposal to bring to the Creative Economy Commission before they bring it to council and decide if the, uh, for support and stuff. Um, we talked about uh, our strategic plan and the housing program. Um, and that was kind of the big highlights of the Creative Economy Commission. So. Um, I had two meetings, the Community Relations Commission meeting, I had two meetings uh, since the last City Council meeting, the Community Relations Commission meeting, um, and we spent most of that time talking about West Side Mobile Home, which at that point was really questionable whether or not it would be successful. So I do want to give a huge shout out to folks that worked on that, um, with the CRC, the Latina on off again. The Latinx subcommittee worked closely with that, along with a host of people from the college, from Companeros, from the community. But a big shout out to the, our county commissioners. 
for making the one and a half million dollar loan available and to Local First for providing that those resources. It's a wonderful case of being able to help a, a community and keep workforce housing in, um, while it's in the county, those folks are also in the city. So um, it's, that's very uh, useful. The second item that uh, we talked at length about at the CRC, um, Kelsey Bell, who heads up our uh, disability kind of uh, subcommittee. And uh, if you may know Kelsey, she uh, often needs uh, either a wheelchair or some mobility uh, device. She talked at length about how the parks are not accessible. Really, because if you're in a wheelchair rolling around, why oh, I keep losing this? Rolling around on uh, rolling around on the grass is very difficult. And um, I'm going to try the location. How's that? Uh, and she talks about Buckley in particular, and it's not a new um, statement that she's made. Particularly when we have events in Buckley, having bathrooms that are handicap accessible, that needs to be a given. Um, in, in practically anywhere we have an event, making certain if we have, particularly if we have porta potties, but also, uh, and I know she gave high praise to the Parks and Rec Department because she's been talking to them, but can we put down some kind of temporary um, platform, or not platform, but just something that might make it easier for people who either need some kind of device, a cane, a walker, a wheelchair, to get around in the park. So those were two um, big issues that she continues, um, rightly so, to raise, if that, to make certain that we're aware of, along with grading and issues of the maintenance of the trails as well, because that can be difficult. So those were the big CRC items. The IAB, I see Allison here as well, so I always want to make certain I covered everything as the liaison. We met yesterday, and we had quite a few things but I, that we discussed, st starting off with the funding needs that are going to be coming up. You know, the 2019 sales tax, um, how do we eventually address that when it sunsets or if it goes up for a renewal. Stormwater, uh, uh, some of our CIPs would be large would they be appropriate for bonding? So some of the things that we discussed in the strategic planning retreat, we also brought up at the IAB. I mentioned earlier that the stormwater master plan is in its third phase. It should be going to the IAB in May and then coming to a council for our consideration. And then that should have a hefty price tag going along with it. Um, we talked about the CIPs. Um, Allison has been juggling quite a bit and so her goal is to have that presented to the IEB at the next meeting, kind of the five-year CIP plan, um, for, particularly for water and then for water, sewer, others. Um, and then that would be coming back to us. The rate study I mentioned earlier, um, staff has really requested that we as a council determine, and I appreciate the comment that came out of the study session that you need to have the CIPs and a sense of that, but that we think about what's the balance between affordability and fiscal management of a fund? You know? right, so helping, providing some guidance on that. Um, we also talked about the Salt Fab's recommendation for reserve funds for the water. And, and that was rather interesting. The, the, um, one of the board members who actually has done a lot of work with rate studies would, is I think going to try to attend the next and, and provide a, 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 some thoughts on maybe um, maybe not being in a rush a policy but thinking about a couple of alternatives so um, I and I welcome that so I wanted to give try to be coming over um, they just had some questions about the level of depreciation offer their perspective. But one of the probably the most interesting things that we had a, a public comment from former uh, counselor and White, who asked, you know, the water fund, uh, no, excuse me, the sewer fund, we took the uh, administration building out of that process and then built the sewer fund 
and now water, built the, not sewer, built the uh, water, wastewater treatment facility, but now we have a $2.3 million money left over in that bond. And so what was that all about? And so you, when you do your question of scoping and things like that, and, and Jared, I would say, gave a very uh, understandable explanation that they had budgeted for some costs that because of the way we did things, we didn't actually have to pay. Them. So again, those are issues that, you know, if people are asking, well, you, you know, you did this. And, and so I, I shared with Alice, and then I really think that we need to be real clear in telling our story and having, for us, talking points should the question come up of, you know, what's the rationale for that? And, and what are we doing forward? And there are some possibilities that we could use that bond, that remaining bond money for some capital improvement projects that would be, would have been appropriate to include in a bond. So there's some things being worked. But I, I didn't want any surprises to come to council. I wanted you to be aware of that. So um, those are my two reports. Okay, I had a library advisory board meeting, um, and um, we library leadership is front and center for them right now, as uh, they're expecting a significant uh, for the rest of the year. Their interim director, Randy Robertson, is going to be leaving. So, um, city has moved forward. The city staff has moved forward with a nationwide search. And the vacancy was posted and announced on March 9th and will close on April 24th. So they expect that position to be filled by late summer or early fall, which is great. Um, the, over the last couple of months, the library staff has distributed 12,590 5, 12, KN95 masks as well as 1,800 COVID tests. And they had the conversation about the reduction in funding that is now expected. Um, and uh, from Leanne Jolon provided this information. So it's concerning um, in light of some of the new possible variants. Uh, they also discussed the need for a new HVAC system. And I mentioned that this was brought up during our discussion at the last city council meeting. Um, I believe it was presented for, I think, 350,000. I discussed with Commissioner Clyde Church just to let Council know during the meeting that we, you know, we, we would like to, this added to our joint meeting um, uh, as, as it's an expensive and needed item for 2023 that we would like to consider type of joint funding if, um, uh, or have the discussion around it. So he is aware of that. Um, the library annual book sale is May 20th. May, 20, May 20th and 21st. Mark your calendars. This is a very popular event, and a big, big aspect of this is the free cart. Um, it was fun to hear about how their policy around how books that end up going to um, book sale three times get a blue mark on it, and then they, they actually are disposed of because they're so well used. But that free free cart is a very, very popular item at the at the book sale. Um, and then work is work progresses well for exam the effort library district for the public advisory group from Ketchum Durango was hired to conduct the financial overview and provide data and recommendations to council. They're currently in the process of meeting with key st stakeholders and they should have back to us council by late April. Um, so that's that's good news. And based on those findings and recommendations. We want them to move forward with the feasibility po polling study. And that was it for them. That's all. This one. Great. I don't have any updates for, or reports. So um, did you want to say something else? Yeah, I, the, it was the Design and Development Awards. Oh. Sorry. And that is on Thursday, April 14th at 5 at the Powerhouse Sci Science Center. The Creative Economy Commission <clears throat> nominated the Southwest Center for Independence Mural, which is one on North Main with um, the, the large child and um, for Mural of the Year by the Creative Economy Commission. Nice. So anyways, that's what nice. I forgot to mention. Excellent. Any other additions? No? Nope. All right. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>